Hey everyone, it's Nightharo here, and today we're talking about outer space. That's right, the folks over at NASA, uh, specifically the group working on Hubble, have released a one-off TTRPG adventure, which is just, it's awesome. It's amazing. Um, it is system agnostic, so you can play with anything, although D&D is probably what it's most geared towards, but really easily you could play this with any system, and I'll actually be doing it here on the channel if you want to see that, and we will not be using D&D, just to show that you can use it with anything. So what do you get? Um, what is this all about? Well, you know, certainly it's a promotional thing to to get more, you know, awareness about science, about space, about uh, research, and everything else that's being done. And so so in that spirit, you, you'll see me. I, I have nothing bad to say about this, right? I certainly would love to promote all of those things, and I never thought I would be able to, to do that on a, having a channel like this. So uh, definitely going to be leaning into that. With that, I'm also going to treat this like a normal review. So let's go ahead and talk about what do you get? What's in the box? Well, as I already kind of said, you get an awesome one-off, one session, and it could actually be completed in one session, which is amazing. Uh, <laughs> adventure that is system agnostic, but leans heavily into D&D. &D. You could also use this, I just want to point out, easy easily, very easily, with just a couple of handful of additions and a little bit of homebrew, you could make this an entire adventure or even your campaign setting. They actually give you the, the rough outline of an entire world of five major cities, of an underdark and monsters, and it, it, it's amazing. So that's all included in this. You also get a, a map of, I believe it's Albastrom. I, I think my autocorrect got to my notes here, but <laughs> you also get a map of, of the city and of the surrounding areas that are going to be involved in this adventure. And this is a, an important point to note that uh, I will have lots of spoilers in here. I will try to keep it spoiler light, but in general, if you're not a GM or if you think you might play this and you're worried about spoilers or your GM is not going to do their own riff on it, you probably want to go ahead and stop the video here. I'm sorry about that. Other things that you get inside the box. You get a local tavern. There's actually a nod here to the Godfather, the uh, Horsehead Tavern. You also get an idea for a research facility or university. You could reflavor it could be kind of both if you'd like. A fair amount of, of NPCs that are fleshed out and actually advice on how to role play those various NPCs, what their interests are, stuff like that. And then obviously you get a bunch of science information in this book, including in the appendix, but then with links to external links if you would like to learn more about what Hubble is, what they do, other just scientific facts and all kinds of stuff. Now we're going to go ahead and run through the synopsis here, but I just want to note that I have a couple of like handful of GM tips. So if you're actually going to run this as a GM, there's, there's three things, I think two major ones that absolutely you want to keep in mind uh, and worth noting at the end. I'll timestamp them. It's not a, to bait you into watching the whole video, but just realize I got a couple of, of key pieces of advice here that I think might be useful for you, but I'll leave that at the end because it's the most spoiler and I'm trying to kind of make a gradient of spoilers. So what's the synopsis for this adventure? Well, yeah, you, your group of adventurers are working on Hubble or they would have worked on Hubble, but they've been yanked out of, uh, Hubble has been yanked out of, out of the world, out of their timeline. And these adventurers are now doing something else within perhaps NASA or who knows where. And they've been pulled to this other universe. This other universe consists mostly of an exoplanet. So apparently a black hole moved too close to this solar system and it ripped this planet and, and kind of screwed up the solar system, but it ripped this planet and sent it floating off into space. If you're not familiar with exoplanets, they're basically planets that are floating through space without a sun, not attached to a sun. They are a real thing. So the idea is that you're floating on this exoplanet, right? You don't have a sun, there's nothing nearby. So they had to figure out ways of creating energy and it's Etc. Etc. Well, they had magic there, and they actually accessed the the magic of the vacuum or dark matter, dark energy, that kind of thing. Which, for those of you who don't know, makes up most of our universe. <laughs> most of what you can you we can observe and we can see, and everything else is is a small percentage of five percent or less of of what we have calculated to be the observable universe. So ninety five percent of what makes everything what it is, uh, we cannot see or detect at least yet. So that's one of the things that Hubble is working on as well as many scientists and researchers. So that's kind of the, the synopsis for this. Well, th they're trying to better understand the, the energy of the void, the energy of the vacuum that, that they use to power all of their magic. And so they realize it works intermittently, it works in different ways, and they're not sure how to. So they wanted to borrow the research from Earth. They discovered Earth, they discovered that we had research, and Hubble was part of that. And then there's a nefarious figure that has got involved and wants to hoard the knowledge for themselves. A, a dragon, in this case, although easily reflavored if you wanted to. So this dragon has pulled Hubble 
from the timeline, as well as abducting researchers from various places. And so this is where the adventurers come in, right? Uh, they're coming in because they're being pulled into this world to hopefully help figure out and solve this problem since they might have some information. And this actually brings us to the first thing that I would, I would, I'm, I'm strongly recommending for you. You know, what I would like to do, especially if you have kids that are playing this game, or even if you have adults, is, you know, each one of the NPCs starts out as a scientist who would have been working on Hubble had the timeline not been altered. You could stick with that theme, but I would have each person maybe pick somebody that is a scientist that works at NASA or has worked in NASA. We're already talking about messing with timelines. It could be someone from history. Maybe it could be Hubble, Katherine Johnson, Albert Einstein, whoever you wanted it to be. Have your players choose a particular person from history and have them come prepared to give you a little bit of science facts about them to share with the group. That's absolutely what I plan on doing whenever we do this as a, a one-off. If you have kids or if you're doing this as a school project or something like that, book report time. <laughs> you know, come in, tell us about this famous person, tell us what they did, their accomplishments, what have you. Gives them a chance to do some research and to kind of learn as well. So pretty cool and easy way to tie it in here. And and if you do choose people that are not immediately working on Hubble, although this is from the people working on Hubble and obviously that's kind of what they're trying to promote and everything else like that, which again, I'm all for, uh, you could, I just want to point out that you could, you could make this much more broad and it really wouldn't change too much. You'll need to change some of the flavor in here, but it, very little, honestly. So anyways, with that, your team of adventurers or your job is to kind of restore Hubble to where it belongs and to figure out what is going on with all these missing scientists, both on this new world and coming and those coming from Earth. I will also note that there's a line in here that uh, talking about these scientists and saying that, you know, to kind of get you into what's going on. And it says, you know, your job is exciting and fulfilling. And uh, <laughs> and I just thought that, you know, it's, it's a fun and true fact. You know, a lot of people, you know, I know personally quite a few scientists, my wife, has a, a doctorate degree in chemical engineering and her graduate work was in sustainability and all this stuff. You know, I, I've gotten a chance to meet a lot of a lot of serious scientists and a lot of people that have foregone fame and fortune to instead work on science and making the world around them a better place for everybody and understanding it and solving problems that we actually have. And space is absolutely, <laughs> space exploration is absolutely one of those things that we, you know, sometimes we need a reason to invent things. And uh, it's certainly given us that. And so there's a lot of people for every, I just want to say that for every one person that you've heard of, there are thousands and thousands that you haven't that, and, and they may not always all be scientists or doctors, right? They might be support personnel, but there's these people that have foregone a higher pay paycheck that have forgone fame and fortune, like I said, to instead do something that helps the entire human race. And, uh, and to those people, I just want to say we salute you and, uh, your, your efforts, um, while they might not get the recognition they deserved, they are appreciated deeply by those of us who do. Okay. So uh, again, brief synopsis, players have been yanked from our world. Hubble has been taken from our world. It's their job to find it. Turns out it's a dragon hoarding knowledge and the characters need to go find Hubble, slay the dragon or defeat it. However, however that might work for your group and then eventually restore Hubble and restore the timeline. And then they have a choice. They can either stay there or they can return home and they're generally encouraged to return home, but you could have your players start here. This could be the, the, the spinoff point of a new adventure. You know, you're already talking about space and time. So, you know, who's to say they couldn't still go on an adventure and, and Albert Einstein goes and, you know, becomes, <laughs> uh, you know, goes, goes and becomes an adventurer and then eventually returns to, you know, be finishes his patent work, uh, <laughs> uh, in, in Switzerland after the fact. <laughs> Uh, if you are, uh, you know, a D&D player, I just want to mention real quickly, this is a book that I'm going to be reviewing soon, Dark Matter. So this is for D&D specifically. Uh, this is by the folks over at Mage Hand Press. Uh, this has been out for a while. It's an amazing book. A lot of stuff. I'll be doing a review on this. But if you are looking for something D&D based and need more stuff to flesh out your space adventure, uh, I would highly recommend that. I, I, it's not an ad. It's just I just think it's relevant to this. So I want to mention it. And then some I'll be doing a review on. All right. Now, now the three ideas that I want to make sure that, that we got across here and that you guys know about. So uh, there are a, a couple of mentions of things that I think that the players, generally speaking, are not going to pick up on unless you're very heavy handed. I've got some GM tips here on the channel that will help you with this stuff. If you are new to this, if you're running it for kids or whatever, that will give you some advice on this kind of stuff. What I'm giving you now is just kind of a specialized version of some of that. So one of them is that gravitational lensing is, is important for this. And there's actually an illusion that is 
using gravitational lensing. Now, as it's kind of described in the Lost Universe here, I think it would be very hard for players to kind of put two and two together. So when you're talking about gravitational lensing, it comes up in the adventure. When you're talking about it, explaining it to your players, I would emphasize that it changes the way things are viewed. And in, you know, and the way we use it with Hubble is to be able to see things, you know, much more clearly, but it also distorts things. And so if you, you really want to emphasize that it distorts things because it's later on it's used as an illusion and you need the players to kind of be able to figure that or you want them to be able to figure that out. Einstein rings, as mentioned in the book, are one great way to do that, where you, instead of seeing a galaxy, you see a ring because of the gra gravitational lensing or, or part of a ring. And you can see that, okay, it distorts things and maybe things with a gravitational lens aren't always exactly what they appear to be. And while things might not be invisible, in that case, maybe they're, they're obscured or hard to see. Or you could talk more about black holes. One of the things that Hubble has helped us with is understanding supermassive black holes at the center of universes, right? So these, the, you know, many, many times larger than we thought black holes could be. That's what's at the center of our universe. And, you know, one of the ways we observe black holes they're black, <laughs> the light can't escape from them is by the gravitational effects around them. And so that could be another way of, of kind of dropping, being heavy handed with those particular facts to help your players understand and figure out the puzzle a little bit later on, uh, because you, you need to be heavy handed with most players, really all players, <laughs> uh, but just because it's not as easy, you know, there's a lot of other things going on that they're thinking about. And so that'll really help them to be able to solve the puzzle for themselves. Along with that, there is also use of the red and blue shift, right? And I think the idea is like, hey, let's talk about red and blue shift and, you know, wavelengths of light and stuff like that. Um, maybe there's an astrophysicist or a physicist out there that maybe has a better way uh, of, of, you know, advising their players. If so, drop it in the comments below. But, you know, you have a choice of red and blue. <laughs> and so to me, like emphasizing blue being higher energy for, and they're both fire, uh, being higher energy, that that's a more scary way to go. So maybe go the other way. I don't know. I, I just think you're going to want to be a little bit heavy handed with your players to help guide them in the right direction. And there are some magical tools that uh, can help them determine which way to go, but that's one way you can help them because it's more fun for them to kind of figure it out themselves. And then the last thing here, I kind of already covered. Uh, I would strongly encourage you, even with a group of, of adults, you know, have everybody like, hey, here's your pick a person from history, pick a person involved with, with NASA, with Hubble, whatever. And that's who you're going to be and come and tell us just doesn't have to be a lot. Read a Wikipedia article, you know, on it. Just come and tell us some real true facts about this person. Tell us, you know, what, what, what they are, what they're about, that kind of thing. And then, you know, in play, obviously do whatever you want, right? <laughs> you know, it, uh, you can, you can play them as, as odd or, or oddball as you want to be. And, you know, you as a GM or maybe as a teacher could look up and find, you know, who, who are some people that might speak to your children, some people that might look like them, the people might, that might come from a similar background. And I, I think if you look, you'll you'll find some. And then the last thing I just kind of want to say today is that uh, there's some awesome resources. They're actually included in the Lost Universe. The link will be provided below. It's free. You can go download it. Um, but I'll also provide some other links here. PBS Space Time is here on YouTube. They do a great job of explaining all kinds of stuff about space, math, and science. I also really like Fermilab. Fermilab has a channel if you're curious about space time and all that kind of stuff. They have a really uh, great channel and I, I love watching them just for fun. It can be a bit dense both of these but you know there's plenty out there and again if you're an educator if there are some resources or anything like that I am not so please drop in the link down below that you might recommend for somebody if they're trying to do something math or science focus for kids at their school or encourage them so I'll link this on on, on the socials and stuff like that so if you want to you know and I'm sure uh, obviously NASA has as well so let's promote this would love to see more stuff like this that kind of cross between games and science and encourage more young people you know one of the things that a lot of people don't understand is that 400 years ago, you know, the, the literacy rate in most, you know, quote unquote developed countries was under 20%. And if you go back far enough, you get in the single digits and then you get sub 1%, right? <laughs> and then if you look now, literacy rates are, it's almost ubiquitous in most developed countries. And the thing is with math and science is as technology and science moves forward, as we move forward in the world, you know, the level, the minimum expected level of education gets higher and higher. And so one day our children or our children's children, they will all be engineers, right? They will all have that level uh, of, 
of knowledge and hopefully we'll develop systems to help it make it easier to teach and for them to learn. And you know, that day is coming and that day is a brighter future. So let's encourage it to, to get here uh, quicker, <laughs> sooner rather than later. And you know, it's one of the ways that we even as adults can continue to learn and understand what's going on in the world and help it make a better place. Anyways, that's it for today. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, go check out the Lost Universe. Go play it. <laughs> Hope you enjoy Lost Universe and we'll catch you in the next one.